Hello, journalism students. So this is part two of opinions and viewpoints, and we're going to be talking about the different types of viewpoints. We talked about editorials the yet the other time. Now we're going to talk about what other types of opinions there are. So editorials are on are one type of viewpoint. They are unsigned, if you remember, but then you have some others. So you will you'll see columns lots of times this is by one author he follows a situation maybe it's politics or the environment or she he or she follows it and they put they publish their viewpoint on what's called an editorial page they have one focus they're usually written by the same writer each issue um here's an example of what you might find in a school newspaper so i used to have with my students a column what's up with that and it was a column about new or bad rules in school. Uh, another time I had a column called The Bull, The Whole Bull, and Nothing But the Bulldog. Uh, we were the Bridgeton Bulldogs when I worked there. And that was a, you know, kind of a, a funny com uh, column. I've had manners columns. We've had columns about alumni, you know, just kind of praising the works that they're doing in the community. So anyway, those are types of columns. And they could, that could be a profile column. You could focus on a star athlete or a spotlight student or a spotlight teacher. But again, you're giving your viewpoint. You're get, you're probably praising them in that profile column. You have to be careful how you select the person for this. Satirical columns. They use dark humor. They make fun of something in a dark manner they want to bring things into light so you might be mocking the way students treat teachers and we actually got into trouble for republishing an article once the student instead of Gatorade actually said the teachers were drinking Haterade because the teachers were hating on the students and some of the teachers didn't understand the satire and got upset, even though we had a disclaimer at the bottom of the article. But anyway, that's that's satire. Fashion and fad columns, you know, critiquing the, the fashions of the times. Uh, in the club room, positive or negatives of the sports team. You could find these in a sports area, usually not necessarily on the editorial page. You'll find this in, with sports. Names in the news focuses on who has done what and received what award. You could even have a Q&A column that is purely opinion. These columns can use personal pronouns. I know I have do not up here, but if you're an expert and you've written it over and over again, you can use you in this case. They're again 200 to 500 words. You should have an introduction. Let's say it's it's an athlete. Who is this person? What do they do? And what's your position on this athlete? Are you writing about him or her because he deserves recognition for setting a state record or school record. Why are you writing? What's your position? What reaction? Then again, the details and the conclusion. So always the same format, whether it's a viewpoint or an editorial. Hey, okay, so here are some tips overall, whether you're writing an editorial or another type of viewpoint article. Always be fair. You don't just slam somebody in your article without giving them a right of reply or in some cases let's say we are writing against a school issue like students didn't like random drug testing so you have to sort of have another article to balance it out that says the pros of random drug testing if you have one on the cons or you should at least have a news article about it so that that's called being fair be brief again those short paragraphs do your research. Make sure you're not just coming up with things that are spur of the moment. They should be based in fact. Make your points quickly. Boom, 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 boom. Um, short paragraphs again. All opinions based on facts. You should be sincere. Don't take yourself too seriously. This is important because you, you can't be afraid to be criticized. If people read your viewpoint and have a letter to the editor because they don't like it it's okay so don't take yourself too seriously and also if you make a mistake 
avoid gossip and hearsay, and admit when you're wrong. You always see corrections come out in a paper when a writer has done something wrong or hurt somebody. And you're not preaching here. You are persuading. So you're not talking at people. You're talking to them and persuading them. When you're all finished, you must evaluate, evaluate, evaluate. When you're looking at your article, can you sum up your main point with one or two sentences? Did you have that position statement in there? Did you have it again in the closing? Grammar check, grammar check, grammar check. Use the AP style guide. Check for appropriateness. If it's controversial in the school newspaper, it always usually has to get run by administration. We like to let them know it's coming. That's how it works. Okay. Okay. Another type of article in opinions is a review. So anything can be reviewed as long as it's relevant to school, movies, theater performance, restaurants, music, websites, software, apps, games. When you are writing reviews, you should actually make comparisons. How does this film compare to the book or other films of the same type? How does this film compare to another, a, another film in the um, trilogy or if it's a sequel? How does it compare to films by the same director? Evaluate how good it is. Number two, how well does a new game do what it should? Itemize the strengths and weaknesses. So you, whether you list them uh, or just kind of bullet them, make sure you do that. On a CD, which songs are the best and the worst? Or an album, an online album, new singer. School performances or a new movie. This, these are the type of things you're going to evaluate. Hopefully we'll get a chance this year to do this together. The acting, the quality and the believability. Did they pull off the character? I know this year we're doing The Great Gatsby. I'm not sure of the musical. But how believable are the actors in their roles? Sets, design, appropriateness. How, how well does it look? Does it look authentic? Was a lot of time and effort put into it? Dialogue, is that realistic, what the characters are saying to each other? That would be also be the screenplay in a film. Lighting, did it establish the mood well? Sound, were the lines clear and loud? How did music affect it? Direction, did the parts of the production work well together? Okay, finally, last thing, letters to the editor and editorial cartoons. Letters to the editor, which... Again, you may choose one of these for your project to write to a local newspaper. They're usually found on the editorial page, and they give the paper's audience a chance to respond to articles in the paper. So you can respond directly to something you've seen in the paper, or let's say you just want to write about um, defending your school and something that it's doing. Uh, my students once wrote into the um, Bridgeton Evening News when I taught at Bridgeton High School because... It seemed like all they ever wrote about Bridgeton High School was about the criminals, people, alumni who'd been arrested, or any time there was a trouble at a football game or basketball game. We had so many positive things going on. So students actually wrote letters to the Bridgeton News saying, look, we have all these things going on. You need to be more positive. You can do something like that. Editorial cartoons. Cartoons as a symbol. You use an image to present an attitude. Cartoon is a metaphor. This likens one thing to another. Or a cartoon is a joke on current events. It targets a specific news event. If we get to political cartoons, you will be analyzing them for these features. But we may not, just for time this year. And finally, uh, random opinion articles and point-counterpoint articles. Like I said earlier, if you want your being fair... You can have a point and a counterpoint on the same issue. You can have random opinions, people, guest writers or guest columnists. So those are two things that you can do in opinions. And this is pretty much everything there is to know about opinions. Hopefully you do a really good job evaluating the ones that we're going to continue looking at and writing an editorial as a group and picking your own opinions to write 
or doing a review of some type. So good luck.